Hello and welcome to another Precision Fire Repairs video. This is one in my series called Off the Shelf. And actually this won't be things off the shelf but more like off the layout. But why should the engine steal the limelight completely when we all know accessories really can make a layout and a collection for that matter all the more enjoyable. So I thought I'd run through a few of those which remain for sale. In case you haven't seen or heard any of them run before, this way you'll get some experience with that. And I think we'll start from the left and work our way to the right. To the far left here, we actually have one that is invisible when it was covered up by the Bachman Union Station, which those speakers fit in very handsomely. And it's an electronic version of the talking station. And I'll play it for you. The Union Station, by the way, is also listed and for sale. That gives you an idea of how loud and clear that recording comes through and that's digital and you can play it over and over and over and over again. There's no needle to wear out. And um, those speakers really carry the day, I think, very nicely. And again, they hide inside the Bachman Union Station. You'll never notice them, but the sound comes through very nicely because the windows are open. Now let's move over to the right. Here's a Lionel. 182 crane number 182 now i know you're saying oh dave you know i thought you were a flyer guy s gauge and all that stuff what are you doing with a lion l accessory well i happen to think this one offers the most functional operational enjoyment of the cranes the magnetic crane types that i've tried and used the one thing i like about it is you can do 180 degree rotation it doesn't matter. You can do, I mean, a 360 degree rotation. The 180 degrees is actually a limitation on some American flyers. But with this, you can go around and around and around as many times as you want in either direction. It just doesn't matter. It also has dual operation. You can be going in one direction and have the magnet go up at the same time or in the other direction to have the magnet go down at the same time. And it's all controlled by this ingenious four button crane control. It's four button with a knob in the middle and that knob is what activates or deactivates the lift magnet at the end of the cables. So as you can see you can go left or right, up or down and those are your cable directions and then you can have the magnet go on or off depending whether you twist that knob in one direction or another. So I just thought I'd show this to you. Um, they're a little noisy but Post-war motorized uh, accessories typically are, and it has an ingenious clutch mechanism in it, which um, I think allows you to uh, have a lot of fun with it. But I'll um, move to the right. And as you can see, that was no problem all the way around. I'll go back the other direction. In fact, I'll go around again just for good measure. It doesn't care. And then I'll lower the magnet. And I'll activate the magnet. You see the cab light up? That's a cool feature. That's how you can tell when the magnet is activated and it's going to pick up metallic objects that it's in contact with. And then I'll raise the uh, magnet. And here we have some items. And I can, in fact, move it now at the same time that the magnet's coming up, if I want. You can see it's higher already. I did that by holding two buttons down at the same time. Or I can make it go back. And I'll lower the magnet while it's going back. I think the uh, metal objects were lagging around a little too much. But you get the point. It's a very versatile, fun-to-use crane that 
I actually just found it's kind of goof proof. If you have kids using it, they can um, make it go as much as they want in either direction, drop the stuff where they want, it doesn't really matter, and uh, have a good time with it. So that's for sale and a real favorite of mine. I think you might enjoy it as well. The next thing over is the uh, American Flyer 561 diesel horn. This one happens to be in fairly good condition, but it's got its original box too, which is pretty cool. A little nostalgic. And you can hear this one. Still crisp and clear, nice and loud with that classic post-war American Flyer diesel horn. And here's the uh, Lionel. 4-2321 sawmill. This one works really great. I've had dependable operation with it. The boards come out, they get lifted and put wherever you want them. In a car that's waiting or in a tray that's there. I think in a car is most fun, but I don't have the track there anymore in front of it. And that one comes with its original box as well and its original control button. The original control button for the uh, 561 is also here, and that's the original button for the Lionel. It's a slide switch, but that's what they shipped it with. And I also have the um, talking station button for the talking station we just listened to. This is a Gabe the Lamp Lighter by Lionel American Flyer. It's a reproduction, but it works really well, and I like it uh, better than the MTH one because when he gets to the top he actually turns the lights on you don't have to twist and push or do anything special he just goes up there and clicks a micro switch and the lights come on he's got good dependable climbing action as you can see and when he gets to the top bing all the lights come on at his command and of course, he can slide right down. Oh, but guess what? He's not smart enough yet for some reason, despite all these years, to have located an on-off switch at the bottom. So he has to climb the ladder and entertain us in the process to turn the lights off and then go back down into his cabin. There we go. That's gave the lamp lighter in its original box by Lionel, the 23780. Great, fun time accessory. Now this one is the American Fire by Gilbert 785 coal lighter. And to me, it's almost the epitome of their accessories, although so many of them were so ingeniously designed, it's kind of hard to pick an all-time favorite. But this one also comes, as does the uh, lamp lighter, with its original control button. And it also comes with this tray of imitation coal with a guy down there shoveling to make sure that clamshell gets a good bite on it. And I'll show you this one in operation now as well. Well, actually, you better go down and get some coal first. You land it on top of the coal and you press this red button. The clamshell digs in and pulls up the coal load into the waiting unloader and it puts it down inside very smooth post-war open frame motor these are really incredibly like i said ingeniously engineered and designed and to still be working this well after so many years this is a good unit then we dump the coal so you got the coal waiting inside at the bottom I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully. And now I have a box underneath there because I want to catch all the coal that I can and my track's missing and there'd be a car in there pretty low. But watch the coal as it goes out. There we go. The hatch opens up and the coal goes out. Sometimes you have to use the hatch to vibrate the coal a little bit and to get it all come out. But eventually, that's half the fun with an accessory. There you go. 
the bay is cleared, there's no more coal, and it's all in the waiting car beneath. Really cool. Got to be a favorite. Once you get one, you'll be glad you did. So there we have some of the operating accessories that are left. Let me know if you're interested in any of them to see the list with those prices. Please visit my website, precisionflyerrepairs.com. So until the next time, be healthy and have fun running your trains and accessories.